I'm Brad. I'm Rach. And we're going to be talking about the first time we made love. Our wedding night. <laughs> I, uh, before we started this video, I asked Rachel when we moved in together. We were trying to decide if it was before or after we got engaged. And it was before, but barely. Wait, before we got engaged? Well, technically. Hmm. So we dated for a year, we were engaged for a year, and then we got married. Right. So we've been married for, is it coming up on seven years? Yes. Yes. This fall, we'll have been married seven years. It's flown by. It really has. But it has also, it's also felt like forever. Oh. I don't remember In life. In a good way. I don't remember life before you. Ditto. Yeah, so we want to talk about our wedding night. I mean, the whole evening of our wedding. More of the wedding day. Yes. As opposed to... The wedding night. The wedding night. Yeah, we we had a really beautiful wedding. We did, if we do say so ourselves. I wanted to keep it really classic. I wanted it to be timeless. That was my goal. Like, when we planned our wedding, I just wanted it to be timeless. I didn't want to have anything there. Dresses, decor, anything that would date our wedding. I didn't want to look back at pictures like people look back in the 70s and not that there's anything wrong with it but there's like giant hair and like big poofy sleeves and I think that's awesome. I It's a beautiful look. <laughs> <laughs> so we chose our venue it's called Seven Springs Winery. It's so since we've had our wedding they now have like this separate nice wedding hall but for us it was just like I wouldn't say it's a small room, but it's a room that could hold 150. Probably. We had about 150 guests. Mm -hmm. I think we invited 175 and like 150 came. Yeah. So. And it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, which is great because we had a big surprise for our wedding guests. Yes. It was a, it, like something that I didn't love about the concept was that we, where we got married was in the room where people were dining. So instead of having traditional setup with like rows or pews of people, people were seated at their table that they were going to be eating dinner at later. And we were married in front of a big hearth fireplace. And so everybody could see there was a view from every angle, but it was just different that there weren't rows of people. Yeah, so we had a pretty unique wedding in that sense. Mm -hmm. I remember not loving that idea, but it ended up being fine. Yeah. There wasn't any issue with it. No, not at all. So, When everybody showed up, we actually had Rachel's Aunt Betty. We had a picture frame that everybody held. And so she took a picture of everybody on their way into the venue, mm -hmm. which was I thought was a pretty great idea. Yeah, it was neat having a picture of everybody when they arrived. <laughs> and then they would stop at the welcome desk, and Rachel's mom is quite the quilter. Mm -hmm. So she made us a wedding quilt, and everybody, instead of a guest book, everybody signed the wedding quilt. Yeah, that was unique. We also had a big welcome sign that was like an eye chart, and it said, like, welcome to the wedding of Brad and Rachel. November 2nd, 2020 at the bottom, and it was in the shape of an eye chart. I don't I wonder where that is. I don't know what happened to that. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, so that was really neat. It was like on a big easel. And then for the decor, I just wanted it, I wanted full-size trees everywhere. That's what, that's what I wanted it to be like. When you looked in the room, I wanted it to look like an enchanted forest. It sounded like a bridezilla. Oh, it was... I only wanted full trees everywhere. Yeah, life, life-size trees. It was beautiful. So how we achieved that, instead of having full-size trees everywhere, we had the centerpieces were like a large vase with large branches coming out. And they were literally branches that were pulled from the woods. So it was essentially free to do the decor for the whole place. And then we had hundreds of candles everywhere. So it was just this really soft candle light with these trees. And then we hung crystals, basically like crystal ornaments from the branches of the trees. We'll have to insert pictures. Mm -hmm. And so those reflected the light of the candles. And then around the edges of the room, we had a couple of like more like a bucket with the larger branches that were essentially a full size tree. So it was just absolutely beautiful. 
And then, go ahead. Also on the tables, we had RX pads because we wanted people to write us RXs for a good marriage. And on our first- AKA prescription pads. I don't yeah. know that everybody knows what an RX pad is. I hope so. I don't know. And on our first wedding anniversary, we actually opened up, like we put them in this big glass container and opened up and read them. Mm -hmm. That was Didn't fun. learn anything. No, <laughs> everybody was drinking. So it was like, some of them were a little weird, but it was fun. It was fun on our anniversary to open those up. Everybody's prescription for a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Some of them were legitimate and some of them were not. Um, as, as we expected. And then the colors were basically just black and white. Black and white with a little bit of red. So all of my bridesmaids, I picked the um, like the brand of dress, the line of dresses that I want everybody to choose from. And so then everybody could go to, because I had bridesmaids in St. Louis and Kansas City. Basically that was it. Um, but they had to go and like try on the, the dresses and then they could pick whatever style they felt was the most flattering for them. So I think everybody picked a different style except maybe two of them had the same style. And there were sweetheart necklines, there were one shoulder, there were halter, so everybody just picked, it was basically like a black dress that they could hopefully wear again. <laughs> and then we all had bouquets of red roses, so it was pretty simple and, and hopefully timeless. For us men, it was literally just a black suit with a black tie and I had a gold tie. So I just had all the guys, I think most of them already had a black suit. Right. But we if they have didn't, tuxes. then they should have already, <laughs> then they bought one because, you know, they'll need a black, every man should own a black suit. Mm -hmm. And the cost of renting a tux was probably not a whole lot less than purchasing a black suit. Exactly. So we wanted that to be something that they could have forever too. And those small variations from suit to suit, I didn't care about. Except for, do you remember? <laughs> I don't even know how it came up. Was it Kenny or Dan asked? I think it was Dan. Dan. We were, so we were hanging out with our other friends that happened to get married like six months before, not even, four or five months before us. And it was before both of our weddings. So we were sitting around a table and us and the other couple were talking about our wedding plans and all this. And we said, yeah, we're gonna do black suits. And Brad, I wouldn't have even known about this, but then Brad was like, well, Dan said that his is charcoal. And I said, that's fine. And I was like, what? <laughs> you said it was fine? And he didn't realize that like charcoal and black would look very different in a photo. He, I mean, thankfully you brought that up because otherwise, can you imagine? We may not have ended up married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Uh, Looking back on it, do we? We don't even have any pictures of like our wedding party like around the house or anything. No, like we that don't. I know we don't. Oh my gosh, but it would have looked like he was the groom because he would have been the one different suit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But we could have just made him an usher. The crisis was, <laughs> yeah, the crisis was averted. Oh, thank God. Oh, I can't imagine if he would have had a charcoal suit on our wedding day. So we had a videographer. And so mind you, the venue, like Rachel said, was all candles. So no lights. So before the service, the videographer came up to Rachel and said. Oh, you're, you're, I I thought you were being like, like a really dramatic pause. No. I'm like, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, we're not going to be able to see anything because there is no light in that room. It's beautiful, but we're not going to be able to see details of anything. So he asked if it was okay if they put up these lights that would shine on us. Like giant spotlights. They were basically spotlights. Looking back, I think I would have rather dealt with just some grainy footage because there were weird shadows from these spotlights. Mm -hmm. So some of the photos of the actual ceremony are, I don't know, some of them are really good and it's not like we're doing anything with those anyway, but no. um, there were some weird shadowing to get some good bright lighting on the subjects <laughs> <laughs> of the wedding. So it was fine. But the wedding video is definitely my favorite part of the whole wedding. 
Oh yeah. Uh, we'll link it. We'll put it in the iCard here. We'll also link it below. So it's a must watch. It's really short. It's only like five minutes. Check it out. It's awesome. It is awesome. But wait till this video is over before you go do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted to just tag it at the end of this video. Tack it on. Tack it. Uh, but we can't because of copyright issues. We had the rights to post this one time and we posted it on our Brad and Rage channel. So you have to go over to that channel to watch it. Speaking of new channels, other channels, <laughs> I have my own new channel. So I'll link that below too if you're interested in like mom type videos, cleaning, decorating, cooking, shameless plug. It was cool because for alcohol, we actually did kegs of sangria mm -hmm. and obviously kegs of beer and then cases of wine. Mm -hmm. like that was the best part about having it at a winery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, and I never even did get to taste the sangria, but Me everybody either. said it was amazing. And we went through all of it. Rachel and I were actually a little bit hungover for our wedding because the night before we had our rehearsal dinner mm -hmm. and like went out on a cruise and then ended up like at the hotel where most of the people were staying and obviously we had been drinking mm -hmm. and had a limo home and stuff so and it, it was fun because be, where we live most people who attended our wedding were coming from really far away from yeah, out of town it's pretty much a destination right wedding. for everyone else. so the night before our wedding as everybody rolled into town it was all of our friends our college friends our family just it was it's it's such a unique experience having a wedding because everybody you love from everywhere comes together and you have everybody you love and care about hopefully all in one place and that's what's breaking my heart about this year is because everybody who's just you know dreamed about their wedding forever it's weird right now and that mm -hmm. would just be awful but yeah. it was such a cool experience so we wanted to be there with everybody and like our pastor is a good friend of ours too and she was there hanging out and having a few beers and it just it was a really fun evening i wouldn't trade it for anything but yeah the next morning it was a little a little hard to get up <laughs> but it was fine yeah it was it's totally not like fine. We're, we're like throwing up or anything no just a, a little thirsty right so but then it made for like our wedding night, we did not drink much on our actual wedding. Exactly. So. Which I think I would have preferred it. Yeah. Yeah, it was perfect. We still had a blast. We danced the night away. We were on the dance floor like most of the night and had so much fun. And we were really lucky because a retired fire marshal had just gotten into the fireworks business. We opted for fireworks. It was a big surprise for like everybody who attended the wedding. And the fireworks display was like legit, like totally professional, looked like a July 4th fireworks display. Totally. How we got everybody to go outside was that we said we were gonna, we had buckets of sparklers. And so we said we're gonna do a picture outside with everybody with sparklers. And so everybody filed outside, grabbed their sparklers, everybody was lighting their sparklers, and then this fireworks display started. And everyone was just like, wow, it was so cool. Mm -hmm. And it went on forever. And it was super <laughs> cheap because this guy's just like trying to get his name out there. So yeah, he was, was just starting out. It was awesome. It was really awesome. That was one of the best parts of the wedding as well. For sure. So yeah, and it was it was really intimate. Like we didn't have a DJ. We had we literally hand selected every song that played at our wedding. Throughout the dinner hour, we had a playlist of music that we wanted to play during like the cocktail dinner hour, and then we had a playlist of music that we wanted to play for like the dancing part of it. So, it was so fun before the wedding sitting down and picking those songs that we thought would be good to dance to and how many fast ones and then we wanted a slow one. Mm -hmm. And then I have a cousin who's a radio DJ, so he emceed the whole thing and did a fantastic job and then like later into the night instead of going off of the playlist people could like request songs and so we were just like we just basically ended up playing whatever songs we wanted to yeah. which felt more like our wedding instead of some dj like playing songs that they thought we wanted to hear exactly it was fun a band would have been fun too but this was a close second and then rachel and i wrote our own vows after the so like when we got to our hotel, like we took a limo to our hotel and like got all settled in. It was just Rachel and I. We reread 
our vows to each other. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite memories of our whole wedding weekend. Mm -hmm. It was awesome because when we actually said our vows to each other, we were standing up getting married in front of everybody and it, I don't know that like I paid attention as closely. Exactly. I remember thinking they were really funny, like you were really funny during your vows. Um, but I didn't remember exactly what you had said, so it was neat to sit. We were just in our bed, like a really cozy bed in the hotel, reading each other our vows. So it was so nice. Another funny, fun fact was that I forgot to pack a bag for the wedding night. <laughs> I obviously had packed a bag for the entire weekend because we came from St. Louis to the Lake of the Ozarks to get married, but I did not pack a separate bag for the wedding night that could make it to the hotel. You had. Mm -hmm. So like one of the jobs of one of your ushers was to grab our bags and take them to the hotel so that they were there for us. That was like one of the things of all of the logistics of the day. And we realized at some point, I think when he was trying to grab our bags that I had not even packed one. So it was up to him to pack my bag for our wedding night. And all he put in it was lingerie. That's all that she really needed. Well, then I had to do the walk of shame the next day <laughs> because I either had a wedding dress to wear or I had lingerie to wear out of the hotel <laughs> to go home. Yeah, so I think, Rachel, I think you wore my shirt. Did you wear my pants too? I wore your sweats that you had and you wore your suit. Uh. But I wore your shoes because I only had my wedding shoes and I, <laughs> I would have had to wear sparkly high heels with sweat with your sweatpants yeah. it was just like or did my mom bring shoes or i don't remember the details but it yeah. was whatever fun yeah that was fun it's a good memory to have good memories all right well if you have any questions feel free to ask check out our official wedding video down below you'll, yes you'll love it it was amazing have your tish have your tissue with you. Yeah, we watch it every year on an anniversary and I have never been able to get through it without crying. All right, hit that subscribe button. Get notifications when we post a new video. Check out Rachel's new channel and we'll see you Monday. And leave us tips for the seven year itch.